Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about how you can build a report entirely in Power BI website using web editor without needing to install Power BI desktop. It's a new functionality. We are going to check it out and see how it works. This has been a requirement for a long time to be uh, able to use Power BI on Mac devices, on devices that are not Windows based, because Microsoft Power BI desktop only install on a Windows based uh, laptop, meaning that if you have a tablet, iPad, if you have a MacBook and you want to go and build Power BI report, you cannot do that. Uh, there are ways, of course, to install a container and then use it like that. But uh, recently, Power BI has been doing some uh, really uh, enha a good enhancement in the web editor, which makes it possible. Uh, we had these coming separately. Like first, we had the web editor for only the report part. Then we had the web editor for the semantic model. Now we have web editor for Power Query part. So all together now gives you the ability to go and build your solution entirely in the website. So I'm going to show you this, how this goes and how this works. First thing to know is that this is entirely in the website. So of course we don't need to install Power BI Desktop. Um, as I understand it, and this is a preview function at the moment, it might change when it is GA. Uh, it does not work in my workspace. You have to be in another workspace. Now, it does not have to be a capacity-based workspace. Uh, I mean, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. It's not mandatory. So here I can go to a workspace that is just like normal pro Power BI workspace, like this workspace when I click on it. And then uh, I'll show you the workspace setting, the licensing, so that you can see this is a pro workspace. I'll also enable zooming here so that this can show it easier. So as you can see here, the license configuration for this is pro. Uh, if it is premium per user or if it is premium capacity, fabric capacity, in all of these situations, it would work. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll say, go and create a new item. I'll search for semantic model. And when I go to build the semantic model, I'll see this option that says get data. Previously, we had all other options of like Excel CSV, but now we have this option of get data, which is more generic. So when you click on this, you are actually seeing Power Query uh, portion of Power BI, which is kind of what we had uh, in Power BI desktop, uh, desktop and we still have that in Power BI Desktop. So what I'll do is I'll click on view more and I'll see all these data sources available here. In this case, I'm going to use uh, an Excel file link. So I'll go and use Excel as a source. I'll paste this over here, click on next. This Power Query I'm using is not a part of a data flow. It is a better practice if this be a part of a data flow, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, then I'll go and choose the tables that I want, like for example, date table, customer table. Let's also go and choose few product tables and the sales table. Uh, I can go and create the report directly from here, or I can say transform data. Let's say I want to do transform data because some of these tables, I want to flatten them together, such as the product table, um, I want to flatten this with product subcategory and category to build one product table rather than just bringing that into Power BI directly. Um, this will lead into the Power Query editor window in uh, web, the web editor of Power Query. Uh, which I also have this diagram view, which is a really nice view of showing the tables and the steps applied on these tables. So I'm going to do some simple um, transformations here to combine the three tables of products together. And that would be a starting from the product table. So I'll say, let's get the product table. Let's merge this as a query with uh, subcategory and I'll choose subcategory key. As the join fields, you see the, there are different types of join I can choose. I'll click on OK. This will flatten the two. Uh, and then I'll go and choose the columns that I want. Let's say I want product key column, the product name. Um, let's say I would also choose 
add uh, like another field here such as color here it is and then the last one would be subcategory so selecting these right click I'll say remove other columns this is the normal power query within Power BI desktop I think I unselected the rest that is why only one column was selected so one more time selecting the control key uh, using the control key I'll select these three columns and then the last one one more time I'm going to re say remove other columns this time I think the selection remained so from this subcategory table I'm going to select subcategory name and product category key because I want to use it to merge with the product category table I'm actually merging three tables together then the next step is that I would do that merge one more time this time I'll use product category based on product category key and product category key and as soon as we do that then we have all the three tables merged category subcategory and product then I'll go and expand this into having just English product category name I'll remove the category key one of the good things about Power Query is that you can remove it after you have done your work with it uh, and then I have category and subcategories these null values are there because not every product has category or subcategory if I scroll down you see that there are products with category and subcategory so this is my product table and I do not want the product category and subcategory to be loaded into my semantic model anymore because they are already in product table I'll right click on this and disable the load of this this is quite useful because then these will not consume extra memory inside Power BI semantic model when they are loaded I'll, I have explained this feature in another video you can go and check it out so the tables that will be loaded in this case within my Power BI semantic model is the sales table product table date and customer I can go directly to create report or I can go to create semantic model only itself let's go directly to create a report so that we see what is the process and what the process involves I'll go and uh, call this semantic model let's say web semantic model uh, I'll just put today today's date in it because I do have quite a few of these I don't want them to be mixed together and this would create <coughs> the semantic model first and then the report in Power BI desktop you don't see this separation you just see one PBAX file but in the website these are two separate elements there is a semantic model which includes the data the tables the relationships between tables DAX calculations if you have the connection to the data source and then there is a report which has the visualization side of it different pages of the visualization and the visuals itself slicers filters um, and then the navigation between the visuals these two are two separate objects and the report gets its data from the semantic model this is uh, the way that Power BI works all the time uh, and what happened right now is that the semantic model is created and then I also have this uh, report with these elements in it so I can go ahead and create a visualization here such as for example I'll bring sales amount directly in here you see this shows total 29 million dollar sales and then I'll go and say slice and dice this by English education so as you can see this slicing and dicing isn't really changing the value of each of these they are all showing 29 million dollars which means that something is not set correctly in the semantic model so I'll go and say open the semantic model because uh, the relationships might not be set correctly uh, at the moment this does not detect the relationship like the way that Power BI desktop does automatically but this might change uh, soon so here is my semantic model the web editor of semantic model as you can see everything done in the web view so I'll change this from viewing into editing and when I change this now I'm going to uh, create the relationships for this model which is quite a simple process similar to the way that we do it in the desktop so I'll bring the fact internet sales in the middle I'll move the date table over there 
product table and this table will join that based on product key it doesn't matter which way you create that relationship it detects it and as you can see it detected the right type of relationship i'll just click on save same thing between the date table and this it would be date key to order date key i'll create that relationship too um, and then i'll go and create the last one which is based on customer key so searching for customer key here is the relationship based on the customer key everything that you do in a normal power bi desktop scenario you can do here such as for example if you want to hide the customer key um, you can do that um, you can uh, do any actions that you want uh, in here like such as creating hierarchy creating a set of measures let's say for example in my model i want to create a measure table so i'll go and create a new table and we have explained that in another video what is a measure table it's a blank table that you create and put your measures in it so i'll say this is measures table and it's a blank table as you can see i can write tags easily within this environment this creates a measure table at the top over here then i'll go and create a new measure let's say i want to add a measure for sales and this measure is going to be just sum of sales amount from the fact internet sales and i'll make sure that this follows the formatting which is for currency as you can see here i have the currency formatting and the decimal places for that i'll set it as two i will also go ahead and create another measure this time this would be uh, sales year to date and i'll use this calculation which is calculate sales itself uh, for dates year to date of full date alternate key which is my date field and i'm using the default date table in this example so this would also be a currency format i'll change this to currency format with two decimal places now i don't want to go and build the entire example here taking a lot of time i just wanted to build this um, few changes so that you can see that this is all possible to do whatever you want in this semantic model once you created the semantic model once you modified the semantic model um, uh, you don't really need to save it anywhere this is automatically saved that is one of the things about the web editor and now you can go back to the report here is my report if i just refresh this this should now work you can see the sales value itself works not only that here i can also go ahead and create a visual so then here i can go and create a table visual using this full date alternate key um, fields let's say uh, up to the month and i'll add sales and sales year to date so that you can see the values are increasing uh, until end of the year here it is and then starting again for the next year this is year to date calculation and this is a report created from this i'll save this report i'm going to call it report 1 2025 um, and then i can go and create extra reports on top of it it's not just this report that i create like i'll go to my uh, workspace i find this model that i have created i can click here and I can not only create um, reports again using this option, I can also use something like auto create report, which I would just do that here so that um, you get to see a new report uh, created really fast using the data, the values, the columns that we have over here. And I'm going to save this new report as a second report. So this is another report automatically created. So I call this report two. 2025 uh, so i have built the entire solution as you see from getting the data doing the data transformation um, building the semantic model doing the visualization all within the power bi website without needing power bi desktop installation if you ever want to go and um, edit the semantic model this is the editor for the semantic model if you ever want to go and edit the transformation data transformation we have that in here transform data that will uh, open up that power query editor again where we can do all of our data transformation if we want to so it's like one uh, 
Power BI solution entirely built in the website without needing any desktop uh, application. And of course you have, I'm going to close this, of course you have this beautiful lineage in the website as well that can show how these models are built. So if I go to any of these reports and I say view workspace lineage, you can see that in this case I'm getting, uh, if I zoom in a little bit, this is the set of uh, files that I have created. From that Excel file, we are building this semantic model. From that semantic model, there are two reports. One of them auto-created, the other one we created manually. They both come from the same semantic model. This is the Power BI file entirely built in Power BI website without needing Power BI desktop. So very useful option for those of you who cannot install Power BI Desktop. This is not going to replace Power BI Desktop, of course, um, not in the near future. I think Power BI Desktop would be the main tool to create reports still for a long time because of the agility that this tool provides. Uh, but still, for those users who don't have the capability to install it in their machine, like they don't have admin rights, they don't have a machine that they can install on it, then this Power BI uh, web editor works perfectly fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos about Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.